All right then, so we were explaining that uh, we just determined that zinc, it's where oxidation will take place at this electrode. And then we have just defined, uh, we just determined that uh, this electrode will be called the anode where oxidation will be taking place. And therefore here we just find that, uh, we just determine that this electrode over here, it will be cathode where the reduction will be taking taking place. So remember, we used oil, oxidation is losing, oh, okay, yeah. So now I wanted to talk about the electrons, okay? So now the movement of electrons, whether the electrons are going to move from zinc to copper or from copper to zinc. That's what we wanted to determine, right? So we're gonna use oil rig to determine that, okay? So I'm saying, um, the one that undergoes reduction is going to gain the electrons. And the one that undergoes oxidation, it is most definitely going to lose the electrons or electron. Now, let us start with the side that is going to lose the electrons, oxidation, where oxidation is taking place. We said oh, this oxidation will take place here at zinc. So that means here at zinc, we are going to lose the electrons. But the question is, how many number of electrons are we are going to lose from zinc? Some people, it's hard for them to see we're going to lose one or two or how many. So my advice is use your table. So meaning this is what you're going to do. We, let's go to our table. Let's go to our table. And then let's talk about zinc. And let's talk about zinc. Let me do this and then my pen. So now let's talk about zinc. Zinc will most definitely lose a maximum of two electrons. Okay. All right. So that means the half reaction for zinc, we saw that zinc, which is this zinc electrode, will lose how many number of electrons? Two electrons. And therefore, when zinc loses two electrons, and therefore, we are going to have what? When zinc loses two electrons, we are going, to, our zinc will turn into Zn2 plus ions, okay? So this, it is the half uh, reaction of this uh, half cell, okay? And therefore, when zinc loses two electrons, check, zinc metal, this zinc metal will lose two electrons. So when zinc loses two electrons, uh, we have two electrons being lost from this metal, will move upwards, will move in this way, and therefore this light bulb will start to do what? To glow. And therefore will move, will move, will move. Remember, we are talking about two electrons. 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 Now, when zinc loses electrons, what is happening with this metal rod? What is happening with this electrode, which is called the anode? Therefore, the electrode will start to shed off. That means this electrode will decrease in mass and will change in shape. And therefore, the Zn plus two ions, these ions, will be discarded in water. The Zn2 plus ions will be discarded in water as this electrode is busy undergoing an oxidation. Zn undergoes oxidation, which is our solid, and therefore will form two electrodes and Zn plus ion in aqueous state. That means this beaker will have high concentration of positive charges, which is Zn2 plus ions, meaning these positive charges will overpower the negative charges of SO42 minus ions. At first, this solution had this uh, this solution had equal number of concentration or number of, uh, it had equal concentration of Zn2 plus ions, which was balanced with SO42 minus ions. So now this concentration, I mean this bigger, after 
Zn has underwent oxidation will be positive, will be charged to be positive, this beaker. Right. Now, where's, I'll come, what's going to happen afterwards? Now, two electrons are moving, two electrons are moving, they get to copper. So copper says to zinc, zinc, let me tell you how many number of electrons do I need from you. I see zinc. You can give me a maximum of two electrons. Would I be able to uh, accept these two number of electrons or I want three or I just want only one so that we can balance the equation? And therefore we go to copper. Copper, remember, is undergoing reduction, meaning it is gaining the electrons. Let's go to our table once more again. Now this... What am, I, what am I doing? Now let's go back to our table again, to copper. Now this is our copper. Copper says, remember, now we are writing it in this way. We are moving in this way, whereby um, uh, copper says, I will only accept a maximum of two electrons. Like enough, zinc said, now I can give two electrons. And copper said, yes, I can accept those two electrons because that's what I need as well. For me to be stable. Now, this is what is happening. But let me tell you who is gaining those two electrons. Now, when these electrons get into this electrode, when these two electrons get into this electrode, remember in this solution, what is happening? We have copper two plus ions. When these electrons get in, this Cu two plus ions over here, remember, this Cu2 plus ions in this solution, this Cu2 plus ions in this solution over here, they will detect that copper has received two electrons. And therefore, this Cu2 plus ions, they will merge with two electrodes, meaning Cu2 plus ions in aqueous state they will merge with two electrodes to give what? To give copper metal. And therefore now, this is what is going to happen. When this C2 plus ions detect the electrodes and they mesh together to form Cu in a solid state, therefore this electrode will increase in mass, meaning there will be a deposition, this electrode will be deposited by what? Will be deposited by copper, by copper, by copper, by copper, by copper. And therefore, this electrode will increase in mass, will get bigger. Remember that one decreases, which, which undergoes uh, oxidation. This one, it undergoes reduction. Therefore, it will increase in mass due to what? Due to the C2 plus ions and two electrodes. And therefore, this will be rich of Cu in a solid state. Now, because C2 plus ions are being used up due to the fact that they react with the electrons, that means this solution will left behind with SO4 2 minus ions. Therefore, there will be high concentration in this solution of SO4 2 minus ions. And therefore, this half cell reaction, it will be negatively charged because we have high concentration of SO4, two minus ions, right? Right. Now, do not forget, this half cell, it is positively charged. This half cell, it is negatively charged. There is no balance. But because we have the salt bridge, this salt bridge will bring a balance. How? Now, this is how a salt bridge will bring a balance. So remember, I said to you, in this salt bridge, we need an ionic compound. This ionic compound, in this case, I chose to use sodium chloride. Now, this sodium chloride will dissociate into its ions, meaning we're going to have Cl minus ions, and we're going to have Na plus ions in this salt bridge. Now, the Cl minus ions will be deposited in the side of the salt bridge. Why? Because this beaker, I said it is positively charged. 
the Cl minus ions are negatively charged. So these negative charges, they will be deposited. Remember here we have cotton so that this, they do not get into the solution. So this Cl minus ions will be deposited in this side. Here we're going to have negative side. So that this negative side can balance this positive side. And therefore this half cell reaction will now be balanced. And then the sodium plus ions will be deposited this side. Why? Because the uh, sodium uh, uh, plus ions, they are positively charged. So these positive charges will balance with this negative charge since well I said to you, this half cell will be most definitely negatively charged. And therefore this negative and this positive, they balance off. And therefore the reaction becomes continuous. The reaction becomes continuous whereby zinc undergo oxidation, copper undergo the reduction, and then 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 we have our electricity until our battery is used up. And then that's how it works.